Prior to 2019, my wife and I weren't the best with money. I'm not saying we were terrible, but we definitely made multiple mistakes and racked up a sizable amount of debt. $45,000 worth spread across student loans, a car note, and a few dumb credit card purchases. We were just dating at the time and managing our finances separately, of course, because we weren't married yet. And although we managed to save roughly $100 per paycheck each, that was pennies compared to what we spent and wasted. Luckily, though, in 2019, we buckled down, got our lives together, wrote a real budget, made some huge lifestyle changes, and paid off all of our debts in one year. Yeah, one year. Fast forward to today, we're living 100% debt-free, we've rebuilt our savings, we make all of our purchases in cash, including our wedding, and we're actively investing for our future and saving for a down payment on our first home. Now, I know my tone is making this sound easy, but a ton of work and effort went into this in order to make this happen. Overall, the biggest impact was simplifying our lives, taking a hard look at our spending habits, and learning how to say no. I mean, there were so many places where money was just flowing out of our accounts that was easily avoidable. So today, I want to share some of the main things that we used to waste money on that we don't anymore. But first, I want to preface this conversation by saying that if you spend money on any of these things for any reason, this is not meant to shame you or make you feel some type of way. This is solely my list and the things my wife and I have done and are currently doing. One of the major lessons I've learned on this financial journey is that you have to let go of the embarrassment you feel about your financial mistakes. If you don't, that embarrassment will weigh on you unlike any other weights you've carried, making it impossible for you to overcome, outshine, and push forward in life financially. So no shame and no judgment. Instead, I hope this conversation sparks an aha moment where you go, you know, I think I can do that too, even if you've heard them before. Let's jump into it. Number one, eating out and getting takeout. Now, to be fair, I'm sure this one is on everyone's list because over time, it does add up. I remember when my wife was my girlfriend years before our financial journey started, and we would treat each other to dinner dates twice a week, every week. And on top of that, whenever we didn't feel like cooking, which was an excuse we gave a lot, we would just pick something up to eat or order it in for delivery. Needless to say, we ate out quite often. Now, if this sounds like you, here's a quick tip for you. Don't stop eating out cold turkey. If you do, it would be very difficult for you to adjust. Instead, cut back gradually over time. So if you normally eat out two to three times a week, try cutting back to twice a week to start. And then once you get used to that, cut back some more. You have much better luck sticking to it and saving that money if you cut back gradually over time. Number two, fast fashion. Fast fashion is convenient, it's cheap, and it's everywhere. And because of that, it's easy to find yourself buying things you don't need because it's a great deal. And if you don't have any self-control, you'll quickly end up with a closet full of items that you liked in the store, but don't actually wear as often as you thought. Now, to be honest, shifting away from fast fashion has been a slow adjustment for me. However, after I decluttered my entire closet, I took a long break from fashion and buying clothes. In fact, it's been years since I bought something new for myself. And now that I'm ready to start rebuilding my wardrobe, I've shifted my attention towards non-fast fashion. And it's been amazing for my wallet, my closet, and my sanity. Everything that I wear now or look to purchase for myself must fit into all three of the following categories. Practical, meaning I can wear it on most days and it's not solely reserved for a special occasion. Versatile, meaning I can wear it in many different ways with many different outfits. And timeless, meaning I never have to worry about trends and things feeling outdated. Now, sometimes that means spending more money on quality items, but I'm okay with that because I'm still spending less than I would otherwise if I bought things of less quality that I don't need and would never wear. If you're curious about what brands I'm currently a fan of, I'll leave some links down in the description below for both men and women as well as a 15% off code for Cuts t-shirts. Personally, this is my everyday t-shirt, so if you're interested, go ahead and check them out. Number three, the second grocery trip. How many times have you told yourself that I'm just going to run to the grocery store really quick and pick up something I need? Maybe it's bread, maybe it's milk, or something specific for dinner that night, but you end up spending a ton of money and coming home with an armful of stuff that you don't have a plan for. Uh, consider me guilty. <laughs> now, my wife and I both are planners. We meal prep, meal plan, and grocery shop with a list every week. And we stick to that plan for the most part. Now, I say that because sometimes a second grocery trip is necessary. If we run out of something midweek and we need it, we'll just run to the store and pick it up. But 
The key takeaway here is not to overspend and buy things you don't need. True story for you, we have a grocery store that is literally right around the corner from our apartment within walking distance. So it's tempting to find an excuse to go. But one day we were cooking and we ran out of something that we needed. So I kid you not, I went to the grocery store with a handful of quarters, nickels, and dimes and bought what we needed. Sounds silly, I know, but it helped with not overspending. Now, I'm not saying you have to do what I did, but I do want to encourage you to be mindful of how much you spend when you have to make unplanned grocery trips. Number four, all organic, all of the time. Speaking of food, we cook just about all of our meals from scratch 95% of the time. We're also really big on the quality of food we buy and eat as well. However, we've stopped buying all organic all of the time. Now, there are still a few things that we prefer organic, but if it's not necessary, we don't buy it. This small change has saved us a ton on our grocery bill week to week. Number five, one-time purchases. So anything that we can't use more than once, we try to avoid buying. For example, we haven't bought paper towels and paper napkins in at least three years. And instead, we use regular kitchen towels and linen napkins like this one here. Now, again, this took some adjusting to because growing up as a kid, we always had paper towels and paper napkins in the house. It was convenient and quite frankly, easy to just throw it away when you're done using it. Unlike towels and linen napkins that require you to wash them when they get dirty. However, we've managed to save money doing this because we're not wasting money on reoccurring expenses like buying paper towel every couple of weeks at the grocery store. Number six, purchases on credit cards. The thing with credit cards is they give you a false sense of how much money you have. It doesn't always feel like you're spending money because you don't see it coming out of your account. So when we buckled down and got our lives together and started managing our money, we avoided credit cards and stuck to cash and debit cards to make our purchases. That way we were always in control of how much money we had and spent. We also save up for large purchases and never justify debt as an option for something we know we can pay for. For example, like our wedding. Number seven, unnecessary subscriptions. As I'm sure you're already familiar, this day and age loves to lock you into monthly subscriptions wherever they can. And on average, the number of things we sign up for and pay monthly subscriptions for is crazy. Think about apps on your phone, website memberships, gym memberships, subscription boxes, TV, movie streaming, music streaming, meal delivery, cloud storage, and the list goes on and on with new options popping up daily. It feels like everything has a subscription option now. As an example, for the sake of conversation, my wife was updating our finance tracker the other day and she texted me this exact message. 2109 came out yesterday from Apple. What was that? And you know what? <laughs> I literally had to play a game of matchmaker to figure out what this charge was. And it turned out it was a yearly subscription for an app on my phone that I haven't used in years. <laughs> Let's just say that I'm not perfect, okay? See, I'm not against subscriptions. We have a few that we value and use, but periodically it's smart to take a look at your bank statements or if you use a finance tracker to manage your money, take a closer look at that and reevaluate your subscriptions. If you're not using it, cancel it because if you're paying for it and you're not using it, that's a big waste of money regardless of the exact dollar amount it costs you. Number eight, anything paid in monthly installments. Just like subscriptions, there are a ton of companies and online shops that offer monthly installments as a payment option. I don't like this because all this is doing is shifting your focus away from can I afford this and do I have the money to how much do I pay now and how much a month. Personally, I think this is an easy way to end up spending more money and sometimes more money than you have to actually spend because again, these companies are just drawing your attention to low monthly payments making you believe that you're getting a deal when really you're just spending more money over a longer period of time that's preventing you from saving much, if anything at all. Number nine, being disorganized. As someone who practices minimalism, I'm sure this is not a surprise to you, but being organized and living in a clutter-free space has saved us a ton of money simply because everything we own has a home and when we need it, we know exactly where to find it. Being organized means you're less likely to misplace things because when things go missing or when you find yourself growing frustrated because you can't find it, that usually leads to you buying it. And if you're really frustrated, you'll probably buy two of them and save one as a backup for just in case. <laughs> See, if you really wanna save money, spend some time getting organized and decluttering for the sake of not only your wallet, but also your sanity. Number 10, living up to others' expectations. Let's be honest, we've all done this before. 
We've all bought something with the intention to impress someone else or an effort to live up to their expectations. Whether it's clothes you bought for an event you were going to, decor for your home because you had people coming over, or something you saw on social media. We've all done it. I've done it and I've done it a lot. There's no shame in my game. And to be honest, I'll probably slip up and do it again because I'm human, but that's not the point. See, as easy as it might be to do these things, the best way that I've found to combat these actions is by being honest with yourself. And if you find that difficult, find an accountability buddy that isn't afraid to call you out. For me, that's my wife, but if you don't have someone to talk to about it, you can totally do it by yourself. The trick is owning up to your mistakes and the stupid things you've bought. So when you review your finances and you come across one of these purchases, just own up to it and accept responsibility. The best way to break habits like these is recognizing that it's an issue and not making excuses for it. Number 11, buying out of boredom or habit. This is similar to the last point I mentioned, but again, I'm human and I still sometimes struggle with this and I may slip up here and there, especially at the grocery store, but really this is about keeping tabs on yourself and your spending. The goal here is to avoid using money or spending money as a cure for boredom. Window shopping is not a form of entertainment. It's temptation and should be treated as such. So don't put yourself in a position to feel tempted to spend money you don't have, to buy things you don't need just because you're bored. Number 12, haircuts. This one should be pretty obvious as to why, because, well, I'm bald. <laughs> but even before I cut all of my hair off, I was cutting my own hair for the last four years or so. I mean, I still cut my own hair now, it just doesn't take nearly as long as it once did. However, back when I was going to the barbershop consistently, I was spending roughly $65 to $70 a month on average. I was getting a haircut every two weeks at $30 a piece plus tips. And to be honest, I was kind of tired of spending $70 a month on haircuts. So I bought some clippers and decided to teach myself how to cut my own hair. And I haven't looked back since. Now, really quick, let's talk about hair products because I'm sure you're wondering if I still use them. And yes, I do, both in my beard and on my head. I have a beard conditioner and natural oils that I use daily, but I also use a leave-in conditioner and natural oils on my head as well as sunscreen. Believe it or not, when you don't have any hair or when you cut all of your hair off, you still have to take care of your scalp. This is a very sensitive area, at least for me anyway. In fact, the first time I wore my hair like this, I actually got sunburnt a little bit and I learned my lesson very quickly from that experience. So yes, I still use hair products even though I'm bald. I hope you enjoyed this conversation. It took something of value from it. Also, if I said something that triggered an aha moment for you where you said, you know, I think I can do that too. Comment below and let me know. Keep growing, keep learning and always stay true to you. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.